everybody. It's Feel Good Friday. Oh my gosh, there's so many of you already here. Hi to all of you. Hi, Anita. Gosh, it's so good to see everybody. You guys are so cute. You guys, did you know the kits are already live? Kits go live right before I go live, just in case you're curious. I want to do your shopping ahead of time. Hi, Peggy. Facebook's in the house now. So good to see everybody. Hi, Terry. Oh my goodness. So it's Feel Good Friday, which is my very favorite day of the week. And it's extra special because Kathy's here. <laughs> I love it when Kathy is here. She's going through stuff. She's pulling through my bags of goodies right now and beads and fun things. She's actually going through a bunch of stuff that Danielle sent me. Um, and some of that stuff is actually included in some of the kits today. So just so you know, Peggy says, hi, Kathy. Hi, Peggy. <laughs> she says, hi, Peggy. Hi, Dawn. Oh my gosh. Okay. So let's see. I, what was I going to, I don't even know what I was going to say. I'm so excited that my brain just stopped working. It just stopped. It's just not working. <laughs> Okay, so Feel Good Friday. For those of you who do not know what Feel Good Friday is all about, Feel Good Friday is when we do easy instant gratification jewelry that is super easy to make that doesn't focus so much on techniques so that I don't send you into the weekend like bogged down with new information. I just want to send you into the weekend inspired uh, to create things, maybe to buy these kits and recreate them, or maybe just to, you know, to play with some of the beads that are in, in your own stash because uh, beautiful jewelry does not always have to be super hard or a representation of every single skill you've ever learned in your life. And that's what Fridays are for. So I have a brand new maker mix for you guys. And I have some kits. You guys, the kits this week, I'm really excited about these. Uh, I know sometimes I, th I say that and sometimes I don't. And that's because sometimes the kits, I like them, but then there are other times where I'm like really excited about some of the things that are included. This is one of those weeks where there are some things that I'm, I have in kit form that I'm really, really excited to show you guys. And I hope that you love them as much as I do. So that being said, all of the kits that you see today are available for purchase over in my Etsy shop. That's etsy.com slash shop slash 13 crows. Um, I've got Nicole and I've got Colleen here in the comments and they are dropping links so that you can follow those to go directly over there and uh, get whatever you want. So I'm going to show you how to put together everything, but we're going to start with this maker mix. So for those of you who don't know about the maker mixes, um, and I, it's funny because there are still lots of people who don't know about the maker mixes. The maker mixes are little mixes of beads that I put together in very small batches. Sometimes there's only 10, sometimes there's 20. Just kind of depends on how many of the things that are in the mixes that I have. Uh, they end up in maker mixes because I usually don't have enough of them or enough of what's in them to create kits around them. So I put together these little beady mixes and uh, then you can purchase the beady mix and you can do whatever you want to with it. But if you want to, you can buy one of the maker mixes, create a piece of jewelry with it and then post it. And if you post it, then you are automatically entered into a drawing where I randomly draw a name and send that person a bag of goodies. And I got a lot of goodies. Oh yeah. <laughs> there's, there's lots of goodies in okay. this room. So, um, yeah, it's always fun. And, and, you know, and you can use your own beads. You can use stuff from your own stash to mix in with it. And it's not a competition. It's just inspiration and sharing your creations with everybody else. Okay. All right. So before we get started, Danielle is in the house and I do want to toot Danielle's horn. Um, guys, if you get an opportunity to go over to Danielle's shop as well, her Etsy shop, um, the girls here will post a link for it. She's She just has an amazing shop. And like I said, there are a lot of Danielle goodies included in today's kits. Um, but if you want more from her, go check out her Etsy shop for sure. Um, one more thing before we get started, and that is tomorrow I have a Michaels class at 1 p.m. Eastern time. If you would like one more free class for me, you certainly can come and do that. It is 100% free. You just go over to the Michaels website and sign up for it. Tomorrow's class, we are doing pearl knotting. We're creating a knotted part of the necklace is knotted pearls with a faux suede lace tassel. It's really, really cool necklace. It's one where we do the turnaround trick. And if you guys have seen me do the turnaround trick with uh, knotting 
or if you haven't, it's a good one. It's a good skill to, to know how to do. So come join me for that if you want to. All right. Okay. I'm going to get you turned around enough talking and I'm going to show you this maker mix to get us started. All right. So everything's situated here. So our maker mix for this week is a beautiful little purple mix. And this one is called Fairy Queen. It has a crown included and some little check glass butterflies. There are some daggers in here with some AB finish on them. Oh, my light's just going to fall apart in my hands. <laughs> Lots of check glass. There's some abalone in here. Just really, really pretty. It's just a really soft kind of purple mix. So if purple is your thing, this is definitely going to be Mother's Day. one. Oh, yeah. Perfect for Mother's Day for sure. So, so pretty. Kathy is my brain. <laughs> Kathy gives me the words and I just say them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's the maker mix. Now let's move on to the jewelry, you guys. So I'm going to start out with a necklace because I can. It's my show and I can do that. <laughs> so I've got the one necklace that is in today's show is a really, really beautiful double strand necklace and it comes in two different colors. So you can do the blue version, which is the one that we're going to put together, or you can do it in red and I'm going to lay it out for you. And then we're going to kind of put it together and unfortunately you're not really going to get to see it well i mean you'll see it laying flat but you won't see it looking all pretty until we put it on the bust at the end but um i do have it in blue and i have it in red and it has a bunch of really beautiful specialty check in it look out these look at these check glass beads i cannot remember what these are called do you have any idea what these are called no i knew that so i don't know what they're called either but they're pretty. so very, dang very pretty. pretty yeah they're really really beautiful so they're this it's blue but it has this like whisper of purple in it which just kind of takes it to a a whole nother place and then these little guys okay so i'm gonna lay this out and show you what it looks like and then we're gonna put it all together and some of it i've already done just to kind of save time as always, because Feel Good Friday, we always have more than one thing to look at. So it's a double strand necklace, and this is going to be the bottom strand. You can see it's got a little, those are dandelion. That's dandelion, right? The little. Yes. Yeah. I didn't want to say that and then be wrong. Post flower dandelion. Post flower dandelion. Okay. And then our check glass is going to come up the sides. We're going to add one to this one. And then we're going to do a little section of three. And I'll tell you why we do a little section of three when we start putting all of this together. So that's the bottom strand of this necklace. And then the top strand is another little beaded um, chain, if you will. And again, some of that really beautiful check glass. This is blue like these, but in rondelle form. And you can see it has that like purple whisper to it. There's just something about that that is just really, really beautiful. This is great for spring for sure. Now the red one is just as beautiful. So if blue is not your thing, maybe the red will be. I'll show it to you too, but we're going to do the blue. We're going to put the blue together. The red's already together. So this second layer has the flower and we're going to put together this side of the chain. So just lay our beads out here. Okay, so we're going to use some eye pins to put all of this together. And then we're going to use some of this other stuff. I've got some twisted jump rings here and some regular jump rings. We're going to put all this together. And that all comes together with some beautiful blue leather from Leather Cord USA. That's going to be the length portion of this necklace. Okay. So let's get started putting this together. We're going to start down here on this bottom strand since this one needs to be completed. So all of the beads are just going to go on eye pins. We're going to keep this as simple as possible. So going on to an eye pin and we're just going to do a simple loop. So I'm coming in with my chain nose pliers. I'm going to grab that wire now. Since I'm doing a simple loop, I don't have to bend the wire over the top of the pliers. I'm just going to bend the wire over the top of the bead. So I don't need any extra room for wire wraps. I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and I'm going to trim off. I'm going to leave myself about a fourth of an inch of wire. Okay. And then I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers. I'm going to grab that wire and I'm going to roll back to close that loop. 
Because I've only said it like, I could probably do this in my sleep. No joke. Okay. So you're going to do that to all four of the check glass beads um, on the right side and all four on the left side. And then you want to link those together. So what you want to do is you just want to open up one of the loops that you've already made or the pre-made loop, depending on which end it happens to be on. Okay. And to open these, you want to open it with a twist. You don't want to pull it apart. So you want to treat this the same way you would a jump ring, right? So you just twist to open it. And then you're just going to thread on the next bead in the chain. And then you just twist to close it back. Okay. Now, to go at the top of this, we're actually going to do a little series of three rondelles. And those will be the serve as like the top bead. All three are going to go onto one eye pin. And the reason that I use those is because if I had put another one of these check glass beads up here, you can tell these check glass beads are kind of big. I mean, they're they're not huge by any means, but they're much bigger than our the beads that are in the next strand. If I put one of these right here and bring those two strands together, then this bead is going to crowd out the end beads on this top strand is just not going to hang right. So if you're ever in that kind of situation when you're designing a piece of jewelry, putting in some smaller beads on the edges is always a really good trick. It's just a, you know, it's, it's just a really good way to finish off a strand to make everything hang correctly. Because sometimes double strand or triple strand necklaces can be a pain when it comes to bundling all of those strands together. So I'm just going to take another eye pin. I'm going to thread on three of these beautiful rondelles. And you can see these go with the others. They're that blue gray, but they have that purple flash to them. They were just kind of made to go together. And I'm gonna do another simple loop, okay? Bending that. Melissa says, loves those, loving those darker blue beads. What is, is that shape called? I'm not sure. It does have a name. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> yeah, Sam would know. <laughs> All right, I'm going to roll back and create our loop. And we're just going to treat that the same way we treat everything else. Twist to open it. We're going to attach it to the end of our strand and then twist to close it back. Okay, so you'll notice there are no jump rings in between here. This is just the beads connected to the next bead. It's truly just a beaded chain. Okay, we're going to use, <clears throat> let's see here. This guy goes over here. We're going to use a, one of the eight millimeter twisted jump rings as our center. And for our pendant, I've already put a four millimeter jump ring on the pendant. That's just to make sure that everything hangs the correct direction. This little four millimeter jump ring is kind of that go between jump ring. So I'm going to go ahead and open up one of these twisted jump rings. I love the twisted jump rings because of the texture, but I also love the fact that it kind of hides where the cut is in the jump ring it looks like a seamless link. So I'm just gonna twist to open that. I'm threading on the pendant and then I'm gonna thread on each side of this bottom strand of our necklace. And then I'm just gonna twist to close that back. Okay, and on either end, I'm gonna put a six millimeter twisted jump ring. Again, just to kind of tie that twisted texture in, we're gonna be using a few of these twisted jump rings. And this will just serve as our connection to the next portion of our design. So I'm opening that. Oh, this one's already got one on there. So I'll just save this one. You can see I'd already put that one on there. All right, so now we're gonna build the next strand, okay? So the next strand is basically the same thing. It's just a beaded chain so it'll be a small rondelle a larger rondelle small <laughs> one says we need a signal <laughs> a sam siegel signal call for help <laughs> All right, so for each one of these, we're going to do simple loops. You get lots of practice with your simple loops in this design. So I'm just bending the wire over the bead. We'll give it a trim. And then we're coming in with our round nose pliers. We're just going to roll back, close that up. OK, 
Okay. I'm going to do all of these and then we'll link them all together. Nicole says it should be a cast iron skillet. Shine that light up in the sky. <laughs> So Nicole and um, Colleen, there's a question here about where to post the Maker Mixes designs. If you guys want to, I think that's worthy of answering on both Facebook and on YouTube. Um, you post them within the group, but I think Colleen has it set. She has a folder, doesn't she? Or yes, she's, uh, Nicole put the folder in. Yeah. Oh, Nicole put the folder in. I, I knew it was one of them. So there's a folder. Um, and if you just tag it, if you miss the folder, it can get moved over into the folder. But it's a really good place to go and look for inspiration for sure. Danielle should know what those weeds are too because there's two more bags on them. She doesn't though. She said we need Sam. <laughs> she doesn't know what they're called either. Right. All right, so there we go. A turbine. It's a turbine yeah, bead. Brilliant. Go. Thank you so much. All right, so now we've got all of those done. We're going to link them together. So just one at a time. I'm going to open. I'm going to thread on a bead. I'm going to close. And then I'm going to move up to the next loop. Whoops. I'm going to move up to the next loop here. A twist, add the next bead, and then I'm going to move up to the next loop and close. And there we go. So that portion of our chain is complete. So that's going to go on either side of our pendant. We're going to take another. Let's see here. We're going to use another little four millimeter jump ring as our go between jump rings. So we're going to open that and we're going to put that onto our pendant and then we're going to close that back. Okay. And then we're going to use another one of the twisted jump rings. We got to find the opening. Open that up. I'm going to thread on one side of the chain, a pendant, and then the other side of the chain. And then twist to close. Okay. So that will be the second strand. Now it needs the little six millimeter jump rings. And we're almost done with this. I'll show you how to finish this off. And we will move on to the next design which is a really cool pendant that I am really excited to show you guys. Okay, so now we wanna bring those two strands together, right? So to do that, we're gonna use a larger twisted jump ring. And I'm gonna go ahead, open this up. I'm gonna thread on the jump rings on either strand here on this side. And then we're going to add some leather cord to this. Okay. So the leather cord is you've got your piece just like this, and you're going to have two pieces of it and you're going to fold it in half. Okay. We're going to thread that on to that jump ring that we just added to the strands, bring the two ends together and then pull down to find the center. And then you're just going to take these and you're going to tie an overhanded knot. Now, if you want to do a wire wrap instead, or if you want to do anything different here, you absolutely can. Um, but I'm just going to keep it simple with a little overhanded knot. And I'm actually going to pull that down pretty tight. If you don't like the knot in the design, just go around the leather with a little bit of wire, right? Okay, so then we're going to bring the two ends together, and if they're uneven, you can trim off to make them both even, 
And we're going to add a cord end to this. So there are two cord ends in your kit. They're kind of big. Uh, we're just going to slide those two ends into that cord end. And then you're going to use your pliers and you're going to do one side at a time. So you can see I'm just going to bend one side down just kind of fold that over the two strands and then i'm going to fold the other side over the top of that one just like that you can add a little bit of glue here if you want to but it's not necessary i'm going to get a good squeeze on that and it's already got a loop on it so it's ready to go so you've got your cords finished off on that end and you're going to do the same thing with the other one now i already have this one done Whoops. So this side's already finished. I'm just gonna open this jump ring and attach it. So I'm gonna thread on bottom strand here and then that strand there, close that back, right? Now the only thing you have left to do is just add your hardware, but you can see how pretty that blue leather. So the leather is not it's not necessarily part of the design, but I did want to make sure that it matched as well as, as it possibly could. It's so it is so pretty. So there's your two little strand necklace, right? In the blue. Now it looks much better on the best. So you can see it at the end, what it looks like. I'm going to show you the red one because the red one is exactly this exact same design, right? And they're both in the same listing. You just have to pick, but if you like, if blue is not your thing, maybe the red is more your style. Look how pretty that red is. And of course the red has more of like a red leather to go with it. Both of the leather cords are Leather Cord USA. So they're nice and soft. They're very, very supple. So there you go. So, so pretty. So that's the necklace in today's show. Again, that it comes in blue or it comes in red, but it's the same listing. You just pull from the drop down menu to, to, to pick which color you want out of those. But there you go. Can't wait to show you what those look like hanging because they're so pretty. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next. So the next is a pendant. And I'm gonna do this in two steps. So I don't know if you guys remember or not, I'm gonna show it to you. Once upon a time, we did a set together. It wasn't a Feel Good Friday show, it was just a, just a regular live where we put together this pendant, right? We put all these little baby crystal beads on here and then we created, in fact, I showed this to you guys on Tuesday as a little teaser, right? So we, we did this necklace project together once upon a time. It's been a while, right? And we even did the earrings that matched. So I thought it would be really cool to do the same thing in a different color and make it into kits. And I even have the earrings that match. So we're doing blue look how pretty look how pretty so this one's already done it's just ready for the next couple of steps but i've got one that doesn't have any beads on it to get you started and then we're going to put it all together so i'm, I'm probably not going to add the beads to the entire thing but um i do want to show you how to do it so it's just the pendant i didn't include any um chain or anything like that because i everybody does something different with the pendants so don't be looking for anything to string this from. That part is up to you. And that's that's kind of part of the fun, okay? So let's get this started. So I'm gonna use some wire here. Okay. And I'm gonna take the end of that wire and you can see all along the edge of our component are these openings. So I'm gonna take my wire, I'm gonna come up from the bottom Am I going to come up from the bottom? No, I'm not. I'm going to go down from the top. <laughs> and I'm going to give myself just a little bit, like an inch and a half, two inches, something like that. Okay. And I'm going to wire wrap that to this pendant by just going around once or twice just to kind of anchor that wire. So there's once and notice I'm using my I'm using my pliers because that's a little tiny opening and, and sometimes your fingers are just too big to get in there. So use your pliers. They have that tiny little tip on them. All right. And then I'm just going to pull that tight. Okay. So now I've just wrapped around twice. You can see the two little wraps there. And I'm going to trim off the excess because we don't need that. 
And now we're ready to add the beads to this. And adding the beads to this is a lot like doing, a, it's just like stitching, right? So the wire is coming up from the back of the pendant. I'm going to take the end of the wire and I'm going to thread on one of these beautiful little crystals. Look how pretty. They're so, so pretty. I'm going to drop that down and I want that crystal to actually sit on the top surface of the pendant. And so I need to kind of coax it with my finger to where I want it to be. And then I'm going to bend the wire right at the edge of our component. And then I'm going to take the tail end of that wire and I'm going to come up through one of those openings, right? And then I'm going to pull. And you just want to be mindful, kind of, it, it almost helps to stick your finger in the wire as you're pulling it so that you don't get a kink in it, right? And then just pull down, pull down, pull down. And you'll pull it down tight. And that little bead is going to sit right there on the top of that pendant. Okay. So I'm going to do another one. Take my next bead, drop it down to the surface of the pendant. Right. Hold it with your thumb and then go ahead and guide that wire. Right. Go ahead and give it a good hard bend before you try to do the coming up through part. It really helps so that you're not trying to pull that bead around while you're stitching with your wire. So I put my finger back there, pull the wire down tight and then kind of move my finger out of the way as I get closer to the component and there's the next one. So I'm going to do a couple more of these. Cindy says the earrings, are they the same as the pendant? Nope, hadn't gotten to that yet. They're the next kit coming up. Drop the next bead down, right? And we're just going to place that right where we want it. Hold it down with your thumb. Go ahead and guide that wire over and then take the wire from the underneath up through and pull. Pull around my finger and then cinch it down and you can see, and those are not going to move. They're on there for good. Like they're really stable sitting on the surface of this component. So there's another one. Going to drop that down, All right? Hold on to it, bend the wire. the wire from the back up through the front pull okay and you're just going to do that you're going to go all the way around the pendant right placing those beads all along the edge just like I did with this one and then when you get up here to the other end you're just going to wire wrap without a bead twice, just like we did to get started. And then you're just going to trim off on the back. So you can see how that wire is like stitched all the way around the edges. And all of those little crystals are going to sit right on the top of that pendant. It's not hard, you guys. Not hard at all. It's just a kind of a slow process um, because you want to be sure that you're not getting kinks in the wire and, and that you're getting that wire nice and tight so that those little beads are going to stay in place. But it's, it's certainly not a hard thing to do. Okay. So that's how you would finish that part off. Now we're going to build the rest of the pendant. So I'm going to sit this over to the side. And we are going to put together the rest of this. So one of the things that is included in this is the bead that's going to hang right here in the center with a little bead cap and one of these crystals. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up, other than the fact that I have to show you how to do it, is because included in your kit is a head pin. Now, these beads are ceramic and they have a little bit of a larger hole on them. If for some reason your head pin, some of them are drilled differently than others. If for some reason your head pin slides through that ceramic bead and it won't, you know, it's your bead is just too big. The hole on your bead is too big for that head pin. I also included a piece of wire. Okay. So there is a piece of 22 gauge wire also included for you to do your own knotted head pin. But I wanted to give you both options just in case, because of course the head pin is easier. Um, and if you don't know how to do a knotted head pin, we're actually going to do one here in just a few minutes with another project. So you'll see how to do that. 
Um, the alternative would be to put like a, um, you can put a bead bumper here or like a little tiny seed bead if you wanted to. And that would work as a stopper for your ceramic bead as well. Um, but I noticed that some of them, the um, the head pin would work and some of them wouldn't. So I just wanted to be sure that everybody has what they need. So this one is obviously too big. So I'm gonna grab a piece of wire real quick and actually we'll go ahead and do a knotted head pin. I hadn't intended to, but no reason why we can't. Yep, exactly. So if you're gonna use the wire and you're gonna do a knotted head pin, here's what we're gonna do. Okay, so you're gonna take your round nose pliers and we're gonna grab the tail end of that wire right at the tip, okay? And we are going to roll that wire, wire around the tip of the pliers once and you can see that cut on the wire. So I know I've been around once. I'm gonna go a second time around. That's gonna go directly underneath that first wrap. And then when you see that cut on the wire, you wanna stop. Okay, so I've made two little coils with the wire on the pliers. I'm gonna take the wire and I'm gonna bend it so that it's running underneath the two coils that we made. And then I'm gonna take it off of the tool. So you can see our little, our little coils there. Okay, I'm gonna take the tail end of the wire and I'm gonna bend it backwards. And I'm gonna tuck it through just like that. Now, coming in with my nylon jaw pliers to hold on to that wire, I'm gonna place those two coils right up against the edge of that plier, the nylon on the pliers, and then I'm gonna pull. And that's gonna bring a knot in. That's gonna tie a knot down into the end of your wire, and you got yourself a head pin. And I know that that is going to hold our bead, right? Okay, so now we're going to thread on our bead cap and one of our little baby crystals. And we're just going to do a wrapped loop. So I'm going to bend the wire over the top of the pliers. So when I take them away, I've got that little bit of room there. Come in with my round nose pliers. Going up and over. Rotate the pliers so I can take the wire over to the other side. I'm going to switch hands and then I'm going to wire wrap in that space and then I'm going to trim off the excess wire. Now if you're using the head pin you just want to do a wrapped loop. You don't have to do all the knotted head pin business and all of that. All right that's this is just your emergency. <laughs> if you're if your ceramic beads hole is too large. Okay all right so now we're going to put this together. So one thing you may have to do with your pendant is you may need to open this the space up just a little bit. Take your pliers and just barely kind of bend those those loops open just barely. You can see they're not standing straight up and down. They're kind of going out at an angle just slightly and be gentle. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take an eye pin and actually don't, let's see, let's lay our beads out here because I don't remember exactly how this went. So two or I can just pull up a picture and we can make sure we do it right. It's always a good idea. <laughs> okay, so just wanted to make sure that I didn't mess it up. So I'm going to take the head pin, okay? Don't put any beads on it yet. Take the head pin and go through the first loop eye pin. Thank you. We're going to thread on a crystal, okay? We're going to thread on a metal bead. We're going to thread on the wrapped loop of the bead we just did. We're gonna thread on a metal bead and another little crystal. And then very carefully, we wanna take that through the other side, okay? I'm gonna pull that all the way up so that that loop is sitting right up against the little ring on the pendant and we're gonna do a simple loop here. So, Come in with my pliers, just bending. You're just gonna treat the edge of that pendant just like you would if it were a bead. Come in with the round nose pliers and we're just gonna roll back. And you've got your two little loops on either side here, okay? Now, we're gonna take another eye pin, we're gonna open it up and we're gonna attach it to one of the loops that we just made on either end there and close that back. And on this one, we're going to do, <laughs> I 
something. Yes, we are going to do something. <laughs> I think I'm missing a, a little a silver bead. So we're going to thread on a crystal. We're going to thread on, I am missing a little metal bead. Oh, I see it. Okay, two of the metal beads and then another little crystal. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and do another simple loop. And we're not attaching this one to anything just yet. So give it a bend. Come in with your cutter tool, trim off, round nose pliers, and roll back. Okay, do the same thing over here. So another eye pin, open, attach it to that loop, close it back, and we're going to thread on the same beads. So a crystal, metal bead, metal bead, and a crystal, and we're going to do a simple loop. Okay, bend, trim off, round nose pliers, roll back. Okay, all right, now it's almost done. All we need to do now is just attach these two ends to our bail bead. So the bell bead is exactly that. It's a bell. You can slide it onto whatever stringing material you want to. You can, you know, bead a necklace or put it on ribbon or whatever you want. It's got a loop on the bottom. We want to attach to the loop and that's going to complete our pendant. So we're going to open up the loops that we just made very carefully, right? We're going to twist. We're going to thread on. And then we're going to close that back. And we're going to do the same thing with the other one. So open. And we're going to attach, whoops. Adding the second one is a little, a little tricky, but it fits. They all fit together. That one's backwards. And actually I attached it to the loop and not the pendant. <laughs> well, darn. Well, now I just made a mess. I hooked it onto the other side instead of onto the bail. There we go. Hook it on right there. <laughs> there we go. Just go slow. Don't get in a hurry like me. Close that back. And if you need to give it a little, give it a little twist, you can so that it hangs the correct direction. And there you go. And you can thread that onto whatever you want to thread it onto. You can build a necklace around it or leave it just like it is and just put it on a piece of chain. Totally up to you. And the next kit is the earrings that match this. So we're going to do those really, really quickly. And I'm going to leave the pendant out here so you can see. Okay. So the earrings are super simple as well. They're a completely separate listing though. So you'll have to, you'll have to look for these individually. But it's just a simple pair of earrings that matches this. So you'll have the entire set. So we're going to do a knotted head pin with these. So we're going to take our wire and grab the tip of it with our round nose pliers. We're going to roll around the tip of the pliers once and then a second time. And then you're going to stop, bend the wire so it's running underneath those two coils that you just made. And then take the tail and go backwards, right? You got to go back. Stick it through the two coils, bring in your nylon jaw pliers, and pull to pull the knot. And now we're ready to add our, whoops, our bead. So we're gonna thread on our ceramic bead. We're gonna do a little bead cap. We're gonna do a cone. Okay, and then a little crystal and we're going to do a wrapped loop here. All right, so chain those pliers coming in when I kind of line everything up. So make sure everything's nice and even. And then we're going to bend over the top of the pliers, round nose pliers, up and over, rotate, take the wire over to the other side. And then we're going to wire wrap in that space. We're going to come in with our cutter tool and trim off. Now, if you like this, this earring, this length, just add the ear wire to this. 
Um, some people are not going to like the extra long length of adding the extra beads. If that's the case, then you can actually make two separate pairs of earrings out of these um, if you don't want to have them as long as this. So if you do, though, we're going to take an eye pin. We're just going to open up the eye, thread it onto the loop that we just made. And then we're going to do a crystal, another ceramic, a crystal, and we're going to do a wrap loop and add our ear wire, and these will be done. So these are super simple, but they match the pendant perfectly, so they make a great little combo. If you're looking for like a Mother's Day gift, this is a great little set. And the colors work well all year, because they're not super pastel, they're kind of muted, soft colors. So you can get away with these in the fall and the winter too. Uh-oh. Make a mess here. Okay. And then we're just going to trim off. And we're going to add our ear wire. Easy peasy. There you go. Look how pretty. Such a pretty little set. I'm I love this this like blue color. And I'm calling it blue, but it's kind of like a teal, but it is like that muted. It has a little bit of green in it, so it's sea foamy. Sea foamy, yeah, for sure. It's just really really pretty. A great soft color that's not a pastel. I'm not much of a pastel person. That's just me. Um, let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Thinking a beaded chain would look amazing with that pendant. If you have extra in those colors, could you make them available in your shop? I will see what I can do, Patty. I will let you know. <laughs> the sad face was an accident. That's okay. That's okay. Except you're going to have to take that up with Wanda. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to set the pendant and the earrings to the side because we've got two more kits. I've got another earrings kit and I've got a really cool bracelet kit for you guys. I'm going to show you the bracelet kit right now. This is probably... It's hard to say what my favorite is, but this is like in my top of the favorites for this week as far as projects were concerned because I think this is so stinking cool. So this is a bracelet, a wire wrapped bracelet. We're going to put it together, but it has buttons in it. And I'm so glad Wanda's here because Wanda is has told everybody I am the one who taught her that buttons are actually beads. And I'm really happy to show that off today with this project because this bracelet is super cool it has metal buttons in it these came from our dear friend danielle so there are some large buttons and then these smaller buttons with the patina on them and usually when we use buttons in our jewelry making we use like a shank style button but these are two whole buttons and so we got to get a little creative with these we're going to do some wire wrapping and it's not hard it's really super easy so you can see i wire wrapped each one of these i've already done them i just I'm going to treat it like a briolette and then I'm going to add a check glass bead to it and then do a wrapped loop. And then we're going to put it all together to make a really cool bracelet. So I left two of them out so we could do them together. So I'm going to take a piece of wire and I'm going to thread that wire through one of the holes on our button. Okay. And that's not quite the middle. I'm going to take the wire and I just want to crisscross it right over the edge of this, of that button. Okay, now I'm going to take <clears throat> the short wire. It's just a little bit shorter. I'm going to bend it straight this direction. I'm going to take the longer wire and bend it straight up. So we're just making an L. And then I'm going to, you can either hold with your pliers or just hold with your fingers. I find I have a little bit more control if I hold with my pliers. So I'm going to grab that little section of wire right where it's like crisscrossing on the edge with my bent chain nose pliers. And I'm going to wire wrap about three times. Okay, so we've secured that. I'm gonna cut off the excess wire and then I'm gonna thread on a check glass bead and we're gonna do a wrapped loop. So. Clever. Right, and they make super cool earrings too. Yeah. Like you could just pop yeah. an ear wire on that and then call it done. All right, so. Up and over, rotate, 
take the wire over to the other side and then we're going to wire wrap in that space i'm going to do another button so you can see it one more time i'll trim off the excess of the wire here okay so there's one okay i'm going to do the other one and you're going to do this with all the buttons. So all the buttons have a check glass bead to go on the top of them. So I'm going to take the wire. I'm going through one of the holes on the button. Bending the wire just like you would a briolette. Crisscrossing. One of the wires goes straight up and down. One of them goes straight out to make a little L. And then wire wrap about three times. or two times or four times or whatever makes you happy. It doesn't really make any difference. Trim that off. And then we're gonna thread on our check glass and do a wrapped loop. Up and over, rotate, wire over to the other side, switching hands and wire wrap and then we're going to trim off the excess all right so now that we have all of our buttons done and of course i've only done two but you're gonna to have to do that to all of them right now we're going to put all of this together and kind of decide what the pattern is that you're going to want i'm going to go ahead and lay these out so i'm just going to alternate just like this and that's going to be the pattern for my buttons, right? And, and my beads. But now I have to make attachments here. So I'm going to use some of these really cool twisted. I'm loving jump, twisted jump rings right now. So I'm going to use a twisted jump ring, which just kind of adds, because there's so much texture in this design already, even with the beads, this just adds even more fun texture. So I'm going to twist and I'm going to thread that through the empty hole on the button. And then the wrapped loop on the next bead and close. All right. And then I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to take another one, go through the whole second hole on the button that doesn't have anything, add our check glass bead and close. How cool is that? I just, I'm, first of all, I love the patina on these and the antique brass, but I think the buttons are so unique and so fun. And what a cool idea, because you could use any buttons that you have, really. But I was fortunate enough to get these buttons from Danielle and be able to include them in this really cool bracelet. And had enough to make kits so I could share them with you. So all of that's gone together. Okay, the last thing we need to do is we're gonna add our toggle. So the, um, the side with the toggle bar is gonna just get a little jump ring and the side with the toggle ring is actually gonna get one of these twisted jump rings. So I'm gonna open, thread that on. And then before I close this back, I'm going to add our toggle ring close. Now, if you need this bracelet to be a little bit bigger, you can add more jump rings to it. Um, all said and done, it's a, it's, it's like about a seven and three fourths inch bracelet. Um, but again, if you need more, this is the, this is the spot where I would add an extra jump ring or two if you need it for, to make it a little bit longer. And there you go. How cool is that? I just think it's so cool. It's just very unique and different and a great way to use up buttons um, of any kind. But these are these just were made to go together, especially with those cool check glass beads. So all of this is um, thanks to our dear friend, Danielle, who just has the coolest stuff ever. Yeah, it would make a really awesome necklace. I agree with you, Wanda. It really would. And the toggle 
matches. Just super, super cute. And you have all those jump rings, so you've got opportunities to add charms if you wanted to, or dangles, because you know that's what I would do with it. Um, or just leave it like it is, because it's just super cool. It's kind of, it's like this really interesting mix between like Southwestern and steampunk because of the, the metal and the texture that's in those buttons. It's a really kind of a unique combination, but super cool. I hope you guys liked it as much as I did, because I think it's a really awesome bracelet. All right, now we have one more kit to go, and then we'll be finished. One last little look at this guy. I'm going to set it to the side. All right, our last kit is another simple pair of earrings, and these have really cool Tierra Cast wings included. So check these out. If you've got that little inner rock star, that's kind of what I was channeling with these earrings. This is not really over the top rock and roll, but it definitely kind of has that like sassiness to it. So some gold here, mixing the metals with the silver. So we're going to put these together real quick. Super, super cute and really easy to do. So we've got our tear cast wing and you can do you know, one going one way and one going the other way, or you can have them both going the same way. Totally up to you. I do want to mention I have a lot of these wings left. And next week for a kit, I'm actually doing a wings necklace where the wings are going to be in the center. So if you like the wings and you want to come back and check out a necklace that might go well with this next week, that's what I got going on. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach our little dangles to some pieces of chain. You can see I've got bicones for the ends. So I'm going to take a head pin. I'm going to thread on one of these really cool kind of bronze gold bicones and a black bicone. And we're going to do a wrapped loop and we're going to wrap it directly to a piece of chain. So we're going to come in with our chain nose pliers. <laughs> Wanda said, I'm going to need to put on my Doc Martens for these earrings. Yes, these are totally giving me 90s vibes for sure. And I'm not mad at it at all. All right, up and over. Rotate, take the wire over to the other side. But now before you do your wraps, we want to attach this to our chain. So I'm going to use my pliers and just barely open that loop up just a tiny, tiny bit. You can see just a little bit of space there. Just to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to take the tail end of that wire and I'm going to stick it through the end link of one of the pre-cut pieces of chain. And I'm just going to slide that together just like that. I'm going to hold on to that with my bent chain nose pliers. And I'm going to wire wrap and then I'm going to trim off the excess wire. No jump rings here. Wire wrapping directly to the chain just gives you a little bit more of a sturdy connection. So you don't have to worry about a jump ring opening up. Okay, so there's one. We're going to do the other one. We're just going to follow the same steps. So our bicone, our second bicone. Okay, we're going to do our wrapped loop, round nose pliers, up and over, rotate, take the wire over to the other side, and then just slightly open it, just barely. It's a tiny little movement, but it makes a big difference. Stick that through the end of the piece of chain, bring those two together. Thank you, Kim. And then wire up. Trim off. All right, so we have our two, two, you can see the chain pieces, one of them's a little bit longer than the other one. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take an eye pin and we're gonna thread on our two check glass beads. They're kind of matte black, but they have that splatter of that same kind of gold bronze on them as in that's the same kind of as those bicones. We're gonna do a wraps loop here. You can do a simple loop here if you want to, but wraps loop is my choice here. I love those much more. And then wire wrap, oops. And then we're going to come in with our cutter tool, trim off the excess, and then we're going to put all of this together. Okay, so I do need to tuck that little end. Okay, 
So now all of this goes together with this little jump ring right here. So I'm going to open up the jump ring. I'm going to thread on the wing. And then I'm going to thread on each one of the chains. I'm going to start with the shortest one. Thread that on. That's going to hang at the back of the wing. Put the next one on as well. And then the loop on our check glass. Close that back. Make sure you get a good closure on that. And the only thing left to do is just add your ear wire and you're done. I think these are super cute. Normally when I see these wings, I see them with the patina colors or I see them with like the greens and the turquoises and the silver. So I thought it would be kind of cool to mix these up and do something a little sassier with that black and gold just to mix the metals up a little bit. Just gives them a little bit more of an edge. But there you go. There are our earrings. Silver cute. Silver cute. Silver cute. <laughs> All right, I'm going to turn you guys around. We're going to take one last look at everything, okay? We need to see that necklace. Oh, yeah. I'm going to show them the necklace for sure. So, remember the necklace we made? <laughs> I have it in two colors. So, I'm going to show you the blue first. Uh-oh. Stay put, please. All right. So here's the blue. Look how pretty. So, so pretty. Really, really love that. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of partial to I love blue. I love the blue, but I really like blue. Yeah, I'm kind of partial to this red myself. Which is funny, because I would normally, I would normally pick the blue. But the red is all kinds of fabulous. Yeah. So there you go. So pretty. So, so pretty. All right. So those were the two necklaces. All right. And then we had a really cool pendant. So pretty. And then it has, of course, the matching earrings that go with it. And they're a little long, but like I said, you can you can shorten them up and make two pairs of earrings out of these if you want to. Um, totally up to you. Just kind of gives you more bang for your buck. There's our awesome buttons bracelet, which is super fun. I love that. And then last but not least are our fabulous wings earrings. And of course, if those are too long for you, you can always adjust. You can take the chains off if you want to, or um, take some beads off. That also helps with the length as well. But there you go. And don't forget our maker mix, our fairy queen maker mix, right? All right, you guys, it has been so much fun. I hope you guys have loved, I hope you have loved these kits. I really was excited to show you. Uh, Wanda says, is the necklace and the button bracelet sold out? No way. No way. I could be. I don't know. I'll have to look. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. And if that's not the case, they probably will. So uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't wait too long, you guys, uh, which kind of stinks for some of you because some of my YouTube people don't get to see these until Saturday and Sunday. And I always have messages where people are like, what happened to the necklace or what happened to the bracelet? And they get sold out, which I'm not mad about, but it does make me sad for you because I wish that I had enough materials to give them to everybody, you know, but it doesn't always work out that way. So don't wait if you're looking at something, because you never know how long it'll be in the shop for sure. Uh, somebody said, I came in late. Who's in the shop with me? Kathy's in the shop with me today. She was uh, watching and going through, sorting through my goodies. And we're about to put together um, some kits here before I get ready for the Hardwired Live. And that is going on at 4.30 p.m. So if you're a Hardwired member, please come back and hang out with us. Uh, it's our Friday weekly wrap up, but we've, I'm going to do a little, a little ring project. So we're going to make rings today in the Hardwired group just for fun. Um, everybody else, 
thank you so, so much for joining me today. I hope that you have enjoyed these. Uh, don't forget to go check out my Etsy shop if you want to grab these kits to recreate these pieces of jewelry. I put them together and give you everything that you need to recreate these pieces exactly as you have seen them here. Um, and don't forget to check out Danielle's shop because if you like all of the things that you've seen today, Danielle has an amazing little Etsy shop herself. So go check her out and let her know that I sent you there, right? Okay, you guys. Don't forget about my Michael's class tomorrow. Maybe I'll see you there. If I don't, I will see you guys again next week with another fun project. That's Tuesday at 1 p.m. And of course, we'll have another Feel Good Friday show on Friday of next week. All right, you guys have an amazing rest of the day and a great weekend. Bye, guys.